come uh, say hello to us just now. The first female has just crossed the road in front of us. And we're just going to give them a few minutes and I think they're going to come right up and have a look at us as well. Very peaceful herd. Great feeling here. I haven't actually counted them, but three, six, seven, eight. It's like about nine or ten of them at least. And with Ellie's especially, uh, different than you would do with the predators like with lions or with leopard. Where you're more just following them and they're doing their thing with elephants. How you move around them and what you do can play a big role in how they're going to come have a look at you. And uh, let's see what happens next. Look at that. This is sort of cousins and quite often family of each other. Cousins or even brothers and sisters from different generations. So they know each other well. This is a little band of friends. Quite sure of himself. Awesome. Right next to us, there's not an adult elephant close by at the moment. The one female has moved on, the other adults are off to the right. So again, showing great comfort here, look at that. Playing with each other right next to us. Showing us that they are quite relaxed with our presence here. Seven month old, the youngster, a little bit older, the bigger one. The bigger one, I'd say, is probably in the region of about 18 months, uh, 18 months, 20 months, maybe. This is sort of the next size up again. Both of these would be, uh, I'd venture to say, about maybe three and a half, something like that, maybe about two and a half or something like that for the left hand. One on the left hand side looks like a female on the right, young female and young male on the left. Oh, here's this girl, beautiful female this. And um, Andrew actually noticed earlier that she is looking very heavy. You can still see early morning, the sun is still nice and low, we're looking almost due east. But very heavy female this, beautiful female, I mean great condition. Now she's in her prime, she would probably be in the sort of early 40s now. But also very possibly pregnant. You don't necessarily see it that easily with elephants. Oh, guys, look at this right on our side as well. It's difficult. We've got elephants all the way around us now. Another big female there. Got that sort of downward pointing left hand tusk and recognize it from that. <laughs> Great. I love Ellie's like this. I'm just going to maneuver a little bit, reposition us. They're just busy feeding. I mean, quite often when you get to a road like this, put it this way, earlier when you were with the lions, we were sitting with them right in the bush and they sort of just feed around you. But when they cross the road, uh, any tend to sort of cross it. I know it sounds a bit silly explaining it like that, but um, you get the sense that they know there's a road coming up and they cross it and then they go on feeding again once they've done so. Uh, I guess because sometimes there could be one or two vehicles with them that the babies, they know that it's a bit of a exposed is maybe not the right word but something like that and um, they sort of get the whole herd across and then they fan out again as they start feeding so we're gonna join them again on that feeding activity see what they get up to hopefully get a couple of those young ones playing again at the same time if you've maybe just joined us welcome to a beautiful morning here in South Africa welcome to the safari live experience and we've had a great morning. Started with beautiful misty sunrise, some cats, lions. As I said, if you've just joined us, stick around. We're gonna go back to them as soon as there's something happening that side again. HT is sitting with him as we speak. Lovely elephant herd. And as always, lovely guest in the vehicle. Nice to have you here. If you wanna say good morning, ask a few things. Just make a comment. Welcome to do so by either tweeting hashtag Safari Live email questions at wildearth.tv um, I think I'm going to go a little bit ahead it's always nice
nice to find a spot and then wait for them to come towards us. A bit of a clearing around that, so much fun in this area. There you are. Let's see if we can find ourselves a good spot to wait. Spend a little bit of early morning feeding time with this elephant herd. Clearing here, we've got, um, as I said, this beautiful big termite mound to our right, big trees on it. And surrounding it, there's a bit of an open area. Find us a good spot. animals as well, just the way they move, there is this regalness about them as well, I tend to associate that so often with lions, but elephants also just have a certain way of carrying themselves, that's awesome to behold. That's that female that crossed last, if you look again, oh sorry, okay. see the little left hand tusk that's pointing down slightly, how we can recognize her. Pretty sure that's her calf just behind. <laughs> Good morning. Having a look at us as well. You see in the back corner of the vehicle. Right next to us. that sound. That sound is up there for me with lions roaring, hippos calling around sunset, hyenas calling in the night, a deep rumble of the elephant sound. One of the sounds we can hear, they make a lot of different sounds of which we can only hear about a third, but that... I don't think I've ever heard that sound and not enjoyed it. Jason, great questions asking how long is an elephant's nose, what do they use it for and how long do they live for, we're going to talk about that just now, also want to say a good morning to Herman, good morning to your class of students, Herman, I hope it's going good, I hope it's good, I hope now most of you probably didn't have a clue what I just said, that's in Afrikaans, which is my first language, 
Herman is also a very good friend of mine. The camera worked with us for a long time. We've shared some special moments with Elephant, so just what I'll say good hope. Good morning to him in my home language. Guys, awesome questions. Daniel, how long is an elephant's nose? Depends on the size of the elephant, I guess. I've never actually thought of it exactly in measurements, but a big bull elephant can be about three and a half meters tall at the shoulder. Guys, we're just going to get to a better viewpoint and I'm going to actually show you what I'm talking about. So, Daniel, I'm going to get into that just now. And let's get to the other questions. Jason, you were asking how old the elephants live to. In the wild, it depends a little bit on the conditions or the habitat. In other words, the food they have, the water they have. They could live to about 55 would be a good age, 60 maybe. Um, there's a few factors that play a role mainly, or well, the big part of it is their teeth and their ability to eat food later on. Oh, look at that guy stretching his trunk up. Let me just get a good spot here. I know an elephant in captivity, the oldest one I'm aware of, maybe if one or two of you want to give me some feedback, see if you can find out uh, sort of a fact about this. But the oldest elephant I read about was 89 years old. Good morning. That's in captivity when you can help them with softer foods when their teeth get old. The trunk is an extremely versatile tool. It's obviously a nose that they can smell with and they can smell better than we can even imagine. But it's also the equivalent of a hand and an arm and they're incredibly dexterous with it. African elephant have got two little fingertips at the front of it, that prehensile nose if you want to write at the end, whereas the Indian elephant or the Asian elephant has got sort of a one-fingered lip. It's not a lip, but you know what I mean, at the tip of the trunk. In terms of the length of it, um, Daniel, if I get a good view where I can actually sort of illustrate it, I'll try and point it out. But, I mean, this is quite a small elephant. This guy is guessing about 18 months old or so. So, um, not sure how old you guys are, but if you were to stand next to that elephant, I would say at the shoulder, I'm estimating that elephant to be about five foot six, five foot eight. Now, the trunk is also, as I said, it's not only it's not only very dexterous in the sense of being able to take things. In other words, the trunk can move; they can turn it in all kinds of directions. And then they've got these fingers at the tip, so they can really go and, and just take a little edge or pick up a small thing. I've seen them pick up tiny little berries, um, fruits that they're picking up, but the trunk can also expand and contract so they can make it long if they want to reach something, if they want to get to water deep down into a hole. So at full extension, I would say a three and a half meter elephant, if I had to guess it, could probably have about a two, 2.2 meter trunk. I'm just going to spread out around us at the moment and I just want to try and find a good spot that we can sit in the open again, get a nice view of them. You guys, when, uh, when we've done answering the questions a little bit later, you must ask Herman to tell you one or two stories about elephants. Asking about his first walk with elephants. It's a good story to tell to the class. Oh, that's coming off. Ah, oh, that's stunning. Gonna go a bit forward. He's just asking us what we're doing. That little head shake is sort of a saying, you know, what are you doing? Why are you moving behind me here? And guys, do keep in mind, we've been sitting with this elephant herd the majority of the morning so we've spent probably a good hour or more with them so they are very used to us but now they're very aware that we are they're not bothered by us you can see the fact that the whole herd is spread out there's a young one there's a young one guys so quickly look at the height there foot to shoulder so that height this female i'm estimating about 2.5 2.8 meters so that would make that length even at not stretch probably close to 1.8 meters and if she was extended, probably a bit more. So I would, I would actually amend my earlier guess. I would say with a big bull elephant, you could probably get close to it, closer to a three-meter trunk if he extends the trunk, if he tries and stretch it out as long as he can. Beautiful autumn colors as well. You can see almost on a daily basis now in the cooler evenings, you can start seeing the, the color on the leaves. Just look at this little leaf. Look at the beautiful color in that. And this is a great place to see it because you've got backlight coming through the leaf against the dark background of the elephant's skin. Let's look at that leaf. This is autumn. We're going into our winter now. 
more and more we're going to start seeing the colors around us change, the bush change from green to brown. Animals behavior will change a little bit. Predators will, predators will be a little bit more in competition with each other just because they're going to be hunting more around the water holes. Elephants and buffalo, we saw yesterday a little bit of interaction there as well. So the changing of the seasons brings its own set of information for us, the same as the daily activity of wildlife and tracks and sounds, all these things that you use to build sort of the puzzle of what you can find and what you can experience in the bush. And the seasons, like anywhere in the world, plays a big role. Many of you on drive with us this morning on the northern hemisphere, so you're busy coming out of your winter, going into summer, spring essentially. We're in the southern hemisphere on our way into winter in autumn at the moment. big five here. We were just talking about species interaction. Something we'll see more and more of now going into winter. Just different species, how they coexist and interact with each other. Looks like a solitary bull, but I would guess one or two more around. but I just missed the gist of it, Tina. I'll get back to your question shortly. Sound is such an amazing thing, you know, the things we can learn from it or hear from it. Obviously, within our own species, we've got this incredibly evolved language, so many different languages around the world that we speak. You would have to wonder with elephants, do you maybe get different dialects as well? I know you get with lions. But Tina, that's exactly what you were just asking. You were talking about this rumbling that we just heard that was almost like they planned it for us. Thanks, guys. That sound. But Tina was just wondering if you can compare it to like the purring of a cat, which shows that cats are normally quite happy. Um, this is more specifically communication, so they're not doing this just to show what's going on, sort of, I'm happy, I'm not happy. They're actually talking to each other, and quite often when you hear that rumbling, you will hear two or three individuals answering each other as well. So it's definitely a communication, they're talking to each other. There's also sounds that could accompany that soon after or before that we won't necessarily hear, Tina, then that the frequency of that sound is too low. We only hear about a third of what elephants are saying. What's this guy digging out? Maybe looking for a root or something that he smelt there. You can see how he's using the trunk. but a lot of different sounds that they talk to each other with. And that was elephant to elephant talking, not elephant to us. I'm just thinking of it. I know that I used to do some work with John Grinnell, Dr. John Grinnell and lion vocalization. You actually get dialects. Lions in certain areas sound like lions in that area, different from lions in another area. And I'm sure it would be the same with, with elephants as well, maybe even more so. Hey, little dude, how are you? That's great. 
just a few seconds ago we were watching the bigger elephant, one of the sort of teenagers digging there in the that little hole. And the baby was watching it. This youngster came up. Oh, there we go, a little greeting. <laughs> Sorry guys, always difficult to know where to look because so much could happen at any stage with any of these elephants. But the young one was investigating what the other one was digging for, so just learning. And then this female here on the left hand side was just giving us a bit of a head shake. Whoa, we've got another herd joining in. This is great. One herd joining this herd, so there should be a bit of greeting and meeting up together. Look at that, guys. This is a funny angle, but let me just move a bit. Sorry, old lady. This one on the right hand side might give us a little head shake. Used to ask us what we're up to. But this is awesome. One herd joining the other one. Look at that. And a tiny baby. Tiny, tiny, tiny baby. Not days old, but certainly weeks old. Wow! Guys, let me just finish turning here, Andrew. Just hold on a second. Let's just get us into proper position because this is fantastic. You can see those guys meeting up, the young ones especially. Now you all know what it's like. Christmas time, family get together, and you're seeing your cousins for the first time in a year, and like, hey, how's it going? What have you been doing? What are you learning? You know, what are we going to play the next week? And this is exactly what's going on here. Two herds have met up. Now they know each other well. It's not that they haven't seen each other in years, but you just get that greeting again. And obviously, that young one. He's still a bit of a curiosity to the rest of them. So, two herds that have just joined together here. Fantastic. Let me see where that small one has gone. It's sort of hidden amongst the legs of the other elephants there, but we're going to certainly get another look at it. Him or her, I'm not sure. in excess of about 20 elephants here yeah? and just to explain again the what I said with them meeting up again you quite often get it with elephants that um, the core herd the matriarch and her herd that that's permanently together might be anything from as few as three or four elephants up to 15 20 30 elephants depending on the area you're in so when you see these big herds like mega herds you know 50 or 100 or 200 or 300 elephants together that would still be different groups with their own matriarch that are just meeting up together. And you would even find that a lot of those matriarchs will often know each other, well not often, almost always know each other from before, but um, they could even know each other well, meaning they might have been in the same herd at one stage, the herd grew, one of the senior females left and sort of started a splinter herd, but together they would still, you know, they would still spend a lot of time together. Not sure if you could follow how I was trying to explain that. What I mean is you could have a big herd consisting out of different herds, but they still know each other. Could even be related to each other. This is a beautiful female, huh? She's considering giving us a little head shake just to see what we're about. Is that one of the left tusk? Lovely view of her eye as well. Elephants have got such beautiful eyes. And great depth in them. Of understanding, perhaps. follow them a little bit. Great question, Claire. Just asking us there quickly if we can explain again the difference in the skull shape between male and female elephants. It's not that easy to sex elephants. Now, if you look at them, a male and a female, especially when they're sort of in their, you know, small, from baby to about 25 years. After 25 or after 20, it becomes much easier to see the males because they've got bigger skulls as well. So, Claire, firstly, with a mature elephant, a male would have a much bigger skull than a female. But I know what you're referring to in terms of the shape. If we look at the one on the left here, this female, not the youngster there, there we go. That's her, I'm putting her probably in the mid-20s. If you look at her forehead, if she gives us a chance, you see it's got quite a square sort of angle to it. If she turns a little bit, you'll see it nicely. At this age, mid-20s, if this was a bull, and uh, there's not a lot of bulls in this group that I've seen, but if I see one, I'll point it out. The bull doesn't have that sort of square and or, or square top of the head and flat forehead. The bulls have got a more sort of bulgy, um, rounded forehead. And then, as I said, once they get older, there's a bit of 
playing going on, and let's get a bit closer to them. Once they get older into their 20s and certainly in their 30s and 40s, not only are the males much larger than the females, but the head and the skull is much more sort of uh, bulky and heavier with the males than with the females. All right, let's get closer to that little guy again. into this little guy. This is a tiny one. I think we saw this one about three days back. We'll just get a little bit forward. Oh. Oh, that's weeks. Weeks old, already comfortable with the other young ones around. I mean, look at the one that is standing next to the one on the left of that is probably about eight months old and look at the size difference. Oh, you can see the pink behind the ears still. Tiny little dude. Even the, oh, look at that, even the balance. <laughs> Knee just falling in there or the wrist, really. I like antelope as well. These elephant calves are born what's called precocial, so they can soon after birth stand up and walk and follow the herd. But it does take a little while, a few weeks at least, to get good coordination. You can see that one is sort of wobbly a bit. <laughs> Sorry, they just, <laughs> apart from being adorable, which is obviously the case, but they can just be hilarious as well. Elephants as a species, but certainly the little ones like that. They're moving away a little bit just around the road. We're going to stick with them. This is beautiful. We're going to spend some time. I want to show you that little one at least a few more times, see if we can get a bit of play as well. Quite often, small elephant like that, obviously, you know, within the herd of the, the teenagers and the cousins and the brothers and the sisters, a new arrival like that is always very exciting. So there's bound to be some young elephant interaction. We're going to try and get some more of that. But in the meantime, we're going to pop over to Hayden to see what's going on with those lions. And um, 